It's important to protect your API from unauthorized access, and one way to do this is with API keys. And so in this episode, we will cover how to create an API proxy that requires an API key. And then also how to create an API product, how to add a developer, how to register an app and then call your API with an API key. When an app makes a request to an API proxy that is configured to verify an API key, the app must supply a valid key. At runtime, the Verify API Key policy checks that the supplied API key is one, valid, hasn't been revoked, and matches the API key for the API product that exposes the requested resources. If the key is valid, the request is allowed. If the key is invalid, the request results in an authorization failure. So let's first start off by creating a proxy. Visit apogee.google.com. Next, click Develop, API Proxies, Create New. This is the Build a Proxy Wizard. Select Reverse Proxy, which is the most common FYI. Enter the following values like this. Click Next. On the Common Policies page, select API Key. This option automatically adds two policies to your API proxy. Click Next. On the Summary page, select the optional deployment checkbox for your environment. Next, click Create and Deploy. And finally, select Edit Proxy to view the overview of the API proxy. From here, you can view the deployment status, which takes a few seconds to complete. To view the policies that were added by the wizard, let's select the Develop tab. You'll see that two policies have been added to the proxy request preflow of the API proxy. One is Verify API Key, which checks the API call to make sure a valid API key is present, sent as a parameter. The second is a Remove Query Param API Key, which is an assigned message policy that removes the API key after it's checked so that it doesn't get exposed unnecessarily. Click the Verify API Key Policy icon in the Flow view and look at the policy's XML configuration in the lower code view. The API key element tells the policy where it should look for the API key when the call is made. By default, it looks for the key as a query parameter called API key in the HTTP request. The name API key is not special. It can be any property that contains the API key. Next, let's try to call the API. First, let's directly access the target. In a web browser, go to the following address, mocktarget.apogee.net. This is the target service the API proxy is configured to forward request to. You should get this successful response, hello guest. Now let's make a call to the API proxy to see how it's being protected by the policies. We will make a curl command using the external internet facing hostname. If you do not have one set up, I have included instructions in this video's description. Note that in my case, the external IP provided by the external load balancer is configured with a DNS registered hostname. We can call the API using curl and a command line terminal, such as the Cloud Shell, from your Google Cloud project at console.google.com. Because of the Verify API key policy, you get the following error response since it did not pass a valid API key. If we didn't configure that policy, you would get the same successful response we saw before. Now close your Cloud Terminal. Great, so now let's get an API key. First, we'll create an API product by returning to the Apigee console and select Publish API Products. And click on the plus API product. Enter the product details for your API product. First, an internal name. And note, you cannot use special characters. And once created, you cannot change it later. Next, enter the display name, which can use special characters. Or you can let it default to the name which is used in the UI, and you can edit it at any time. Next, add a description of your API product. Then check the box to have it allow access to your eval environment and change the access level to public. Also check the box to automatically approve access requests. You can leave quota and the allowed OAuth scopes unfilled for now. Next, scroll down a bit to the API resources section and click plus. Then select the API proxy you just created. Then click add. In the path section, click add a path and enter a single slash. Click Save. Next, we're going to simulate the workflow of a developer signing up to use your APIs. 
A developer will have one or more apps that call your APIs and each app gets a unique API key. This gives you, the API provider, more granular control over access to your APIs and more granular reporting on API traffic by app. So let's create a developer by selecting Publish, Developers in the left menu and click Plus Developer and enter the following in the New Developer window and click Create. Now let's register an app by selecting Publish, Apps, and click Plus App. Enter the following data in the New Developer app window. Click the Developer box to select a developer you just created. Then in the Credentials section, ensure Never is selected so that the credentials for this app never expire. Next, click Add Product and select the product you just created. And finally, click Create. Now let's get the API key by clicking Show in the key field. You can access this page later by going to Publish, Apps, and selecting your app. Notice that the key is associated with the product you created. Select and copy the key, which you will paste as a query parameter using the documentation's template and ensure there are no extra spaces. Next, open your cloud terminal once again and paste this curl command. And now when you call the API proxy, you will get hello guest as a response. Congratulations, you've created an API proxy and protected it by requiring that a valid API key be included in the call. However, note it's a good practice to pass the API key in a header rather than in a query parameter. The reason is because headers do not appear in the browser history or network logs, which could present a possible security risk. And so I have linked instructions on how to do so. And there you have it, a quick walkthrough on how to protect your API from unauthorized access. And friends, if you found this episode helpful, you can click like or subscribe to the channel. Cheers.